Hi family, this is a follow up from uh, the video that we sent Sunday morning and just want to do a kind of a Bible study as a follow up to that video. Uh, hopefully that encouraged you and um, just brought a new sense of vitality to a crazy situation that we're in here. Our plan is to do a video Sunday morning and also Wednesday morning and Wednesday morning will be more of a Bible study. Sunday morning will be more of a worship experience um, and devotional thought. So, and then I'll continue on Wednesday morning with the thought that was begun on Sunday. And so what we talked about Sunday was all stemming from Psalm 23. Um, as I mentioned, I woke up with reciting that. And my encouragement to you uh, is to memorize that passage because it's just supremely um, influential. Millions of pilgrims throughout the centuries have sought its wisdom, and we hope to as well as we head towards Easter. A couple points that I made in that teaching is uh, stemming from Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, and that actually is Jehovah Jireh, um, my provider, and the fact that God has us as his chief concern, people, humanity, men and women, you, me, um, people everywhere. Are his chief concern. He is our great shepherd. We great, gain great encouragement from knowing that, but we also get great teaching as we look into the word. And I love the flow of the sequence of things. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures besides quiet waters or still waters. He restores my soul. And then he says, he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. The goal of all of our lives is a life of holiness where our character is shaped to be like him. Our cash can change and our community can change, but our character is what he's really running after to shape us to be more like, more like Jesus, more like the Son. And so toward that end, I thought it'd be fun to dive into a Bible study regarding uh, the path of righteousness and if the promise is true from Psalm 23, verse 3, that he leads us in paths of righteousness for his namesake, if my life right now is not headed in a path of righteousness, um, how do I adjust? And scripture is very clear that there's a couple of things we stop doing there's a, and some things that we start doing uh, in our quest to become more, more righteous. When I was um, 15 years old, my pastor in Virginia, uh, who had done a uh, series of visits to the local jail, he invited me to come with him. And, you know, I'm 15 years old. What do I know? How can I counsel, you know, convicts? But he's like, come with me. You'll learn a lot. And certainly I did. Um, visiting the prison caused me to hear a lot of stories of men. And quite frankly, it, it convicted me because a lot of these men, and these were all men, uh, we didn't visit any, any women. It was all men that we visited. But they weren't like hardened, evil people. They were people who had done something really bad and sinful, and they regretted it. And I just noticed that the difference between me or someone not in prison and someone in prison was that someone had decided to make a really bad decision at some point that completely changed their life. When I read the passage like this, he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. I'm under the conviction that there's certain things that we should stop doing that might lead us to death or, you know, God forbid, even incarceration. But even shy of that, lead us to paths of unrighteousness that can lead us into ways that don't honor God. And there's a couple of ways that I want to encourage you through Scripture, that if he says, I'm going to lead you in the paths of righteousness, I'm going to heal your soul, I'm going to restore your soul, I'm going to lead you into paths of righteousness for his name's sake. If we are indeed the object of his chief concern, if we are indeed the focus of his tender mercies and his love, and he's leading us to, towards paths of righteousness, then what do we need to change if we're not following paths of righteousness? There's a couple of things, two things I want to point out to you, and we're going to turn to Romans chapter 6. 
Romans 6. So if you're in Psalm 23, you're going to turn right significantly to the New Testament and go to Romans chapter 6. And in Romans 6, it talks about the old man. It talks about the fact that there's an old, old man or old woman in each one of us that can throw us into a tailspin at times where we choose the wrong path. We choose the not so good path for our lives. And he says in Romans 6, verse 6, we know that the old man, the old self, in essence, was crucified with him, meaning with Jesus, in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For no one, for one who has died with, um, has been set free from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we'll also live with him. And we know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives now to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. And so you have this real sense of saying no. We have to say no to the old self, to the old man, the old, the old woman that will lead us in paths of sin and unrighteousness. We have to say yes to, to Christ and what he's doing in our life, to follow him. The great shepherd, as, Psalm 23 talks about, Jehovah Jireh has provided everything for us. Saying we have to say no to the old man. We have to say no to the selfish ways that each one of us finds ourselves in. Um, my great conviction is that sometimes we are selfish. We act where we put self first and we say, no, it's my agenda over God's or it's what I want to do, uh, forgetting and leaving God in the dust. And Psalm 23 rightly directs us to say, no, the Lord is my shepherd, meaning I'm not my own shepherd or um, I can't decide for myself what's right, but I want scripture to bathe over my own spirit and to guide my own steps. And so... I need to say no to the old man. So that's the first no to the old man, the old woman, the old self. The other no we need to say no to is culturally. Romans 12, if we go a little bit further into Romans, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, it says, I appeal to you, brothers, in the mercy of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. And listen to these words. Do not be conformed to this world, or the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So there's this great contrast between culturally and how many of us don't love movies or, or good music, but be careful, the text says, not to pattern your life around what the culture is selling. Because the culture is selling something. The culture is selling the fact that you're empty without it. You need it in your life to have fulfillment. And God's saying, no, radically, you need, you need me in your life to offer fulfillment. I am the great shepherd, says God, and I will heal your souls, and I will lead you in paths of righteousness. So we have to say no to two things. One, the old self. Two, the culture. There's things that we're watching that we shouldn't be watching. There's things that we're engaging in that we shouldn't be engaging in. It's not leading to life. It's not leading to wholeness, according to how God would see it in our life. So those are a couple things to say no to. So I'm going to say yes to, and we're going to turn to Galatians chapter 6 for that. Galatians chapter 6 talks about us not following the patterns of the world, but following after the Spirit instead. Galatians chapter 5 verses 16 through 26. So Galatians 5 uh, sets up this, this other this contrast that we saw in Romans 6, uh, also in Romans 12, where he says, I say to you, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. And by that, it could also refer to the old man, the, the, the ways of the world, if you, if you will. Now, we know that John 3.16 says that God so loved the world, and by that he means humanity. God loves people. 
Um, but he doesn't love the way of culture and the way the culture will lead us towards emptiness or despair or darkness or death itself. But the culture's not really, <laughs> the culture's not going to guide us towards God. And the fact that God is our shepherd and wants what's best for us. He says, I, I say to you, walk by the spirit and you'll not gratify the desires of the flesh. The desires of the flesh are against the spirit and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. But these are opposed to each other. There's, there's a battle to keep you from doing the things you want to do. Now, if you're led by the spirit, you're not under law. And the works of the flesh are evident. Self, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, he says, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But there's a huge shift here, starting in verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, gentleness, self-control, faithfulness, kindness. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let's also walk by the Spirit. Let's not become conceited in provoking one another and envying one another. But live by the Spirit. Keep in step with the Spirit. Say no to self. Say no to culture. Say yes to the Spirit. Follow after the Spirit. When I was 15, I was trying to ask the question, okay, what does it mean to follow the Spirit? And when it articulates the qualities of the life of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control, all of these qualities in our character, follow after these qualities of character, follow after these, pursue joy, peace, and patience, asking God to clarify in our hearts a sense of self-control and a sense of mirroring our life after Christ's. If the promise is true from Proverbs, from Psalm 23, verse 3, that God will lead us into paths of righteousness for his namesake, then if we're not in paths of righteousness, we need to stop doing some things that lead to our detriment. We need to start doing some things that lead to praise and lead to joy and lead to, to love and the things that are articulated in Galatians 5 when it talks about the life of the Spirit. We have a great shepherd, and that great, great shepherd is leading us in the paths of righteousness. We may need to say no to a few things. We may need to say yes to the Spirit, to follow the Spirit. The Spirit will always lead us back to Jesus. The Spirit will always lead us into greater truths. The Spirit will always lead us into greater levels of maturity. And we're called to go to greater levels of maturity. If we're at a certain point, we need to grow to the next point. If we're at a certain point, we need to grow to the next point and keep pursuing Christ. Like when we stop learning and we stop growing, that's when we cease in our spiritual life. But keep going, keep growing, keep pursuing scripture and asking the hard questions of, in your own life of saying, okay, where is my life not headed in the path of righteousness? Where is my, path, my life not headed in the path that God I know would want me to, to follow? He is our shepherd. He's our great provider. He's Jehovah Jireh. And that's actually the, the root of that. The Lord is my shepherd, the Lord, Jehovah Jireh, our provider, who leads us into green pastures and besides quiet waters and restores our soul and leads us into paths of righteousness. I want to encourage you with these words. I want to encourage you to keep pursuing a life in God. And as we continue on in this quest sort of before Good Friday and before Easter, we'll continue to send out videos to encourage your walk. We hope this has been an encouragement to you. Make sure you contact us as the office if we can pray for you in any way. We want to encourage our folks in this season of uncertainty. There's so much we can lean into in terms of certainty and fortitude for the next steps in our own lives. And I pray you're encouraged. Be encouraged, church, and we'll talk to you soon. God bless, and may you follow the great shepherd of all of our souls. Amen.